Hey, what is up, guys? I'm KBHD here, and the leaks are finally over. The hype is done. The speculation is complete. Welcome to your first look at the Samsung Galaxy S9 and the Galaxy S9 Plus. So in general, as soon as you look at it, it's pretty clear it's a refinement of what we've already seen with the Galaxy S8. But there are a couple, couple new interesting things worth noting. So what's new with these new phones? First of all, the all new colors. There's the black like usual, which is stealthy. Uh, then there's also this coral blue and this lilac purple. And then internationally, there's going to be a silver titanium one again. I mean, yeah, Samsung tends to be using the super cool color scheme for these phones. I'm not the biggest fan. I'll probably still end up using the black one. But the mirror finish stays. It's still super shiny and reflective like the past couple of years. This is probably a phone you'll end up putting a dbrand skin on to keep it from looking like a mess six seconds after you take it out the box. But uh, yeah, they're keeping this look for now. Aesthetically, though, the shape and the bezels and the placement of everything, the power button, the volume rocker, the Bixby button, everything's the same. The one thing they've moved is the fingerprint reader now to underneath the camera instead of next to it, which I of course actually like a lot. There's no in-glass fingerprint reader, nothing crazy like that, but this is definitely more reachable and in a better place than it was before, especially on the smaller phone. Like I said though, most of this phone is going to be pretty familiar. Still the 5.8 inch and 6.2 inch Infinity displays respectively, still IP68 certified, still has wireless charging, still has USB Type-C, still has a headphone jack. The speaker got a slight improvement, uh, but it's still in the same place right at the bottom of the phone. But they added stereo listening with this earpiece up at the top of the phone. And from listening to it, it's a bit louder, but not significantly better in quality or anything. Um, the coolest new feature though is it got Dolby Atmos surround sound. Something of course that is new though is the specs. You gotta bump the specs up to be a top tier 2018 flagship. So. They bumped it up to get Snapdragon 845 and 4 or 6 gigs of RAM. So Galaxy S9 has 4 gigs of RAM and Galaxy S9 Plus has 6 gigs of RAM. It also has 64 gigs of storage plus micro SD card expansion. And they've also added a couple small things now like iris scanning from the Galaxy Note and facial recognition. So there's more ways to biometrically authenticate if it's not just the fingerprint reader. But obviously by far the biggest change and the biggest new feature that people were looking forward to for Galaxy S9 is the camera. All the teasers and all the leaks and all the hype for this phone were all focused, no pun intended, on that camera. So Galaxy S9 has an all new camera system and when I say camera system, really I mean the newest most interesting part isn't the sensor, it's the glass, it's the lens. So okay, up until now pretty much every smartphone camera is so small, it's so miniaturized that they all have a fixed aperture lens. You don't change the aperture, they fought from an f2.0 aperture down to f1.9, down to f1.8, f1.7, they're all in this battle to get as much light into the camera as possible, because that's a good thing. But something to know about wide angle, wide aperture lenses, and you know this already if you know anything about photography or video, is the wider you go, the softer it generally is. So a lot of photographers shooting with their lenses will opt to stop down to f2.4 or f2.8, because it's sharper there. It's way sharper there than it is at f1.8 wide open. So Galaxy S9's new camera is the first I've ever seen in any smartphone that can change apertures. It's a variable aperture lens. So you can shoot at f1.5 wide open, super huge amount of light, or you can stop down for more detail to f2.4. And you can actually see it physically doing this and switching when you move back and forth between f1.5 and f2.4. It's a pretty obvious difference when you get a good look at it. This is super cool to me. I've never seen such a small camera with a variable aperture before. Pretty sure GoPros don't do this. Most tiny cameras smaller than a point and shoot don't do this. This is really impressive for a smartphone. So the goal with the software is to quickly and smartly switch between the wide open and stopped down depending on how much light there is in the scene. I was told it defaults to the f2.4 and then it opens up to the wide under about 100 lux, which is actually a really low light, which means it's doing it as more of a low light mode. But I'm doing the switching you see here in pro mode, which has a button for it, so you'll be able to switch to f1.5 whenever you want. So I'm definitely going to keep my eye on this for the full review, going to be testing it pretty hard to see if it really makes a difference. And I have a feeling it's going to be a pretty big deal. If you can see the difference between f1.5 and f2.4 photos on this phone. But until then, fingers crossed. And then there's a bunch of other new camera features tossed in there as well. Like it will do slow motion video. It'll do 
240 frames per second at 1080p, which is pretty awesome. And it will do 960 frames per second at 720p. So I did get to test this on the pre-production units. It's super slow motion, obviously, but I'm not sure I can vouch for the quality. That's why I throw the air quotes in there. But even in this well-lit room, you can see a lot of grain. I'd like to test this outdoors, though, maybe with something super slow, like an explosion or something. I think a lot of people don't really realize how impressive 960 frames per second video is, especially on a smartphone where you're writing all of that to the memory as fast as possible. But it stretches 0.2 seconds of video to six seconds of footage. That's like turning this into a movie. Now, number one, it doesn't record audio, which that's probably fine. You don't really hear anything important with super slow motion video anyway. So it sort of overlays this music of your choice, which is neat, I guess. But number two is it only records 0.2 seconds of video. And we were trying this. Uh, you have to get really smart about what exact fragment of time you want to record. But they have this automatic motion detection feature where basically you tell it to wait for fast motion inside a certain box. You hit start and then it waits for something to happen inside the box and records 0.2 seconds of that. So you can frame it up and move the box anywhere on the screen. It's cool when it works. I'll try it out. There is also in the camera uh, a better UI for swiping through the different modes now, similar to the iPhone. There's better multi-shot for noise reduction and HDR capabilities. There's some Bixby improvements, so it'll recognize, it'll do object recognition, things like what Google Lens is doing, and it'll also live translate signs that are in different languages, so that's cool. And something else interesting was it will overlay makeup on you, and then if you like it, it'll give you a link to buy that makeup. I guess that's pretty neat. But there's even something they're calling AR emoji. AR emoji. R emoji an emoji ripoff. It's a feature that uses, it uses the front-facing camera to create an animated version of your likeness. So you can use that to record and send videos of yourself as this animation talking to people. Or you can make yourself an animal too, no big deal. But bottom line, all of this stuff, all this new stuff in the camera is what makes it pretty clearly the biggest new feature of Galaxy S9. So that's what I'm looking forward to testing the most for the full review, definitely make sure to get subscribed if you haven't already to be among the first to see that. But other than that, it is for sure the phone we were expecting. It's what we were looking forward to. And it's still premiumly priced, just barely below the Galaxy Note. I think the one thing that'll be more interesting to note this year is the bigger difference between Galaxy S9 and Galaxy S9 Plus. They used to be pretty close, and I actually think I almost gave an award to Galaxy S8 for being so close to its bigger brother as far as feature set. But this year, the Galaxy S9 Plus not only gets a bigger screen and more battery, but it also gets more RAM and more camera. So there's a bigger separation there, a bigger buying decision. But either way, it comes out March 16th, and uh, the pre-orders start March 2nd, so just in a couple days. So let me know what you think. Is this camera, all this new camera stuff, enough to get you in line to get a Galaxy S9? Or maybe you're uh, gonna keep waiting on some other flagships. Let me know. Until the next one, until the review, thank you for watching. Talk to you later. Peace.